All right, so we'll just return to our training. And the next item we're going to have a look at is parameters. So what we'll have a look at here is basically how to use a parameter. And what is a parameter? It's basically a placeholder for a value used within a calculation. So for example, if you were calculating your sales plus tax, what you might normally do if you know your tax amount is stable is put sales multiplied by say 1.1 if it's 10% and that will give you your sales plus tax. If however your tax figure is a variable so it changes over time you could use a parameter so what you could do is invoice amount multiplied by parameter and then you would allow the user to specify what the current tax rate is. So if we just leave our storyboard and create a new report What we're going to do is have a look at our invoice amount. And then if I add a parameter, so we have some parameters set up here. If you don't have access to any parameters, ask your administrator because it's something that gets added during the view builder process. So I'm just going to add a parameter and you put it in the filter area. Now the reason you do this is because you're actually going to ask the user for a value when they run the report, exactly like you would with a filter. Okay, so now we create our calculation and in this case what we might do is look for our invoice field and we're going to multiply it by 1. plus the parameter. Okay, so we're just going to validate that and save. And we're going to add our calculation. And I'm just going to format that field as well. And by default, our parameter was 100. So you can see that we have quite large figures now. But if I go into charts, what we're going to do... Oh, let me return to data. I forgot to aggregate that. So we're just going to sum that up as well. All right. So... I'm just going to create a line chart and this is going to allow us to monitor our two figures. Okay, So if I go to output, what happens now is I'm going to change my figure to uh, say 2, so 20% tax. Okay, so you can see as I change that, it's actually adjusting my line and it's adjusting here. Okay, so that's how you use a parameter. Now you can use a parameter, uh, you can use multiple parameters and you can use one in multiple calculated fields. So uh, they can be really useful and you can do uh, quite complex formulas and things with them. Uh, you just need an idea of what you require. All right, so the next thing we're going to have a look at is related reports. So we'll just jump straight to those. Oh no, we're going to look at CSV imports, pardon me. Uh, so <clears throat> the next type of specialty report we can create is a report based on a CSV import. So think of a spreadsheet and what Yellowfin gives you the ability to do is import the contents of that spreadsheet as long as it's a CSV. So it needs to be a simplified file. Uh, it allows you to import the contents of that and create reports within Yellowfin based on that file. 
So to do that, firstly, you need one of those files. And then what you need to be able to do is import that into a writable data source. Now, if you don't have permission or you don't see any of the options I'm about to show you, you'll just need to talk to an administrator. So I'm going to create a report. And we're going to say, well, no, our view isn't there. So we actually want to load a CSV. And then we need to select a database to load the CSV into. Now, if you don't have any available, you need to talk to your administrator and you need to tell them that you need a writable data source. And what that basically means is you've got a database that Yellowfin can store into. All right, so we're going to click load and I need to find my file. So I'll just go to my documents, my CAM incidents file, and it will load that in. Now I have advanced settings here, so I can say, okay, well, what category do I want to place my view into? Uh, what field separator have I used in my CSV file? Generally, uh, well, for my files, it tends to be a comma, but other people have special characters, so you can specify those here. Uh, we can then specify the decimal separator so that it doesn't get confused when it's reading the file as well as the encoding and finally the precision. So basically what Yellowfin is going to do is if you have low precision it's going to look at the first part of the file so uh, it might be a thousand rows and what it will work out is it will say okay in the first thousand rows of this file this first column looks like it's just dates so I'm going to call that a date field and so on. Now, if you have a very complex file and you have uh, lots of different types of data, you may want to use high precision, which means that it will examine the entire file before it specifies the type of each column. So say in the, the nine, uh, 9,000th row, your column that it thought was a date previously actually just has text in it. Yellowfin will then know that it's not solely a date field and it will uh, specify that correctly. So if you have issues uh, just try high precision but if you do use high precision know that it will take a lot longer to load the file if it's quite large because Yellowfin has to read every single cell. I'm going to use low precision because mine's not very complicated. <laughs> All right so now we're going to give the spreadsheet a name so this is what we're going to call our view when it's imported. And we're just going to prepare that. So when we load the CSV, we actually see the contents of it and we get a snapshot of the first 20 rows. So what we can do now is explore those fields and ensure that they've come through correctly. So what we might want to do, for example, is we have this camp ID here. We might actually want to convert that to a dimension. So we don't actually want the decimal places. Or we could change that back to a metric if we want to. So you can adjust the fields to an extent. Another thing you can do is you can scroll over and you can make sure that all of the fields have been read correctly. So for example, this start date field, Yellowfin thinks it's what we call a var chart. And basically all you need to know about that is that it's not a date. It thinks it's text. So what we need to do is actually convert this field and tell Yellowfin how to read the field. So what I'm going to do is go into my uh, function menu over here and I'm going to apply the date conversion and I'm going to apply it to my start date field and basically what it's doing here is it's saying okay well what are we going to call this and so I'll just call it start date date for now and we're going to convert it to a date field so no time components in there then we need to specify what's going on here. So what we need to tell Yellowfin is how to read this. So we need to tell it that those first two characters belong to the day component of the date. And then this word here belongs to the month component and so on. So how do we do that? We just click this info 
and it tells us. So if we're looking for the full month name, we need four capital M's. If we're looking for the day of the month, we need two D's and so on. So I'm going to start typing. So I'm going to tell it, okay, initially we have two characters and they belong to the days. So DD. And you can see what it's doing here is it's converting as I go. So it's worked out those two. Then I put a hyphen and then I put month. So that didn't work. So I just keep going. And then that worked. All right. So now what I need to do is just ensure I complete it. So now it knows, okay, I know how to read that and it's converting it correctly. So what will happen is Yellowfin will convert it and then in the report we can display it however we want. But in order to have things like time series charts, we really need to make sure that Yellowfin knows it's a date. So if I scroll over now, you'll see I have my converted field and it looks correct. Alright, so once I'm happy, I could also add things like hierarchies. So here we have camp, region, country and main. Now in our standard ski team views, these are actually uh, set up as a hierarchy. So let's set that up. So we're going to say we want the camp region to drill down to camp country. And then we want the camp country to drill to camp name. Okay, so if I go back in there, you'll see we have region to country to name. Alright, so once we're happy, we finish. And then what happens is Yellowfin stores our CSV file. And we now have all of our fields. So what I can do is drag my fields in. I can put in my metrics. And I can enable drill if I want. And then I basically just treat this like a normal report. So what I would do is just save this. From here, if what I want to do is create another report based on that CSV, I just now click Create Report. And you'll actually see that I can select my camp incident states, which is the CSV we just imported. So once you've imported it the once, you can create multiple reports of that. If you need to edit it, you can go back to the file and you can choose to do things like append more data, override the current data or delete it. So if you have additional months worth of data to add to that file, you could append it onto the end, so add it on uh, and so on.